Question. If you were able to go back in time before the atrocities in Nazi Germany, would you have warned the Jewish people about what was going to come? Would you have been there and braved the persecution that would have come upon you for being a supporter of the Jews, knowing the slaughter of six, over six million Jews that was going to come in the next few years, would you have stood up and been counted with the small number of people that would have defended the Jewish people? You say, well, there's really not a whole lot we can do about that. We can't go back in time. Well, that's very true. But we can come forward in time to today. And you see it's going on again. History is repeating itself. And you see the Bible tells us about this time that's coming. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob in the Bible, your King James Bible, the other name for Jacob is Israel. The Jews have a time period coming that is seven years in length and it is going to be far worse than what happened in Nazi Germany. And sadly, if you study it, and we will be studying it in these series of videos, exposing Stephen Anderson and his lies, we will study this. Um, sadly, uh, if you look back at Nazi Germany before World War II, uh, a lot of the preachers, a lot of the quote-unquote Christians, professing Christians, were preaching replacement theology. They were speaking against the Jews. They were saying that the Jews are no more a people. They're just an inbred race of, of mixed kindreds and things, and, and there are no more Jewish people. Only the church is the Jewish people. Only the church is the nation of Israel. They taught replacement theology. And so when it came time to persecute the Jews, the German people were all too happy. Many of them, I, I'm sure that there were some that resisted. I know that there were some that helped the Jews to escape. But many of the German people had no conscience at all about killing the Jews in mass. And that same spirit that comes from Roman Catholicism, that same spirit is alive and well right now. That same spirit is currently preparing Bible-believing Christians to persecute the Jewish people. And uh, Stephen Anderson is the one who is spearheading this movement right now. That is why I'm going to oppose him. That is why I am doing a series of videos exposing the lies of Stephen Anderson. You see, Stephen Anderson came out and used a very wicked book written by Martin Luther uh, on the Jews and their lies. And Stephen Anderson made a sermon, The Jews and Their Lies, and then acted like it had nothing to do with Martin Luther, and yet I've proved it in one of my other videos there that Stephen Anderson purchased and gave positive reviews of Martin Luther's book on the Jews and Their Lies on Amazon.com. Stephen Anderson is a closet Catholic. Okay, and I'm going to prove it to you. Stephen Anderson covers up for the Catholic connection to the Nazi party. He denies it. Stephen Anderson denies the literal interpretation of the King James Bible. I'm going to prove it. I'm not going to just say a bunch of things about Stephen Anderson. I'm going to show you the video clips. I'm going to show you the proof in this study. You say, well, Brian, is it, is it really that important? Well, I'm going to give you just a couple of things here that I'm going to, that I need to say. Okay, um, if you've heard some of my preaching over the years, you know that I do not believe in national revival being possible right now because we are almost at the end of the church age. Okay, that time between the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the rapture of the body of Christ. Many dispensational preachers like myself, we call it the church age. All right, now I understand the church just means a called out assembly. There will be a called, called out assemblies in the time of Jacob's trouble. I understand that. But the specific time where people are in the body of Christ, they are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay, that specific time there that we are currently in, it is coming to an end. And so right now, we are passing the baton over, we are handing over 
the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God to who? Who does the Bible say is going to take over in that time? The time of Jacob's trouble. The Jews. So God has a future plan for the nation of Israel. That's why I don't fight to try and preserve American rights, constitutional rights and things like that. And let's bring back the Constitution and constitutional form of government. Let's vote the right people in. It's lost. It's over. It's done. All I am interested in right now is leaving behind videos and information that defend the Word of God. And as I see the end of the church age rapidly approaching, I am wanting more and more to speak to the nation of Israel, to the Jewish people, and let them understand there's still time to get out of this thing that's coming, the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel's 70th week is written about in the Old Testament, and it's revealed in all its gory detail in the book of Revelation, in the New Testament. And you compare the two. You compare the book of Job. I have a whole study on that. The book of Job and Revelation, there are so many parallels between the two. Daniel and the New Testament line up, majorly line up. You would do well if you are a Jew. You would do well to study the New Testament, at least read it. I didn't say you have to become a Christian and join a local church someplace that's run by the Catholics or something. I didn't say that. I said study the New Testament. Okay, Because in the New Testament it says that there are two witnesses that will be coming in this time of Jacob's trouble. And those two witnesses are greatly revealed, revered by the Jews. Moses and Elijah. Okay, You can read about it in the book of Revelation. And they're going to come back to confirm the word of God. And the Jews require a sign according to the Bible. Uh, the nation of Israel starts with signs and wonders. Moses, and he goes down to, to Egypt to call the nation of Israel out. And there are signs and wonders that are given to Egypt. And you study in the book of Revelation, the seven uh, seals, the seven trumpets, the seven vials, they parallel many times what's going on in the book of Exodus. It's very, very amazing. It's in, an extremely interesting study to do. And God has future plans for that specific geographic nation with a certain kindred of people. And I'll see one of the big mistakes that Stephen Anderson and other replacement theology heretics make is they will try to reason not from Scripture, but from what they call science, DNA science. The Bible calls it in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, the Bible calls it oppositions of science falsely so called. You see, the Bible says that God would bring back the Jews. And we're going to see about these in these videos. God's going to bring back the Jewish people. And God is the one that seals them. God is the one that chooses them. And the replacement theology heretics try to say, well, the Jews have intermingled and they've, they've, they've gotten mixed up and everything else. And so how could they find pure Jews? Now, it's, it isn't about the Jews finding people that are of pure kindred, of pure descent. God finds them. God does. And see, if the replacement theology thing is correct, then the Bible's a lie. It undoes the New Testament. And again, like I said, we're going to be looking at all this in this study. But I have been exposing Stephen Anderson now for many, many years. Very many years. Um, it started out because he teaches a post-tribulation rapture. And he is non-dispensational, very pridefully non-dispensational. And announces it on his website. We are non-dispensational, you know. And... Uh, so he makes a mess of the Bible. He does not rightly divide the word of truth. And uh, he just, it's a problem. But I saw this thing years ago where he was using Matthew chapter 24 um, and taking things and, and, you know, he just, he kind of avoids certain parts of Matthew 24 where it talks about keeping a Sabbath day or them in Judea or uh, who so, you know, the, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place just conveniently overlooks those things. And then he pretends that the, the fig tree prophecy about it being reborn, he just ignores it. Well, that's, that doesn't have anything to do with you know, the nation of Israel, even though the nation of Israel is compared to a fig tree over and over and over again in Scripture. 
doesn't line up, you know. He just ignores those parts. But um, I made a sermon years and years ago called Post-Trib Thieves. And in that I said that these post-trib thieves, all of them without exception, will take Matthew 24, rip it completely out of context, and plunk it down on the church. And they will get rid of the Jews. They will steal God's promises, God's covenants that he made with the nation of Israel. And that is exactly what Stephen Anderson does. And see, if you can do that, if you can get rid of the nation of Israel and just kind of say, well, they're not really God's people anymore. They're just kind of, you know, mongrel mass of people that they've intermarried and there's really no good use for them. Well, then you can kill them. You can slaughter them just like Hitler did. Hitler was a replacement theology believer. Hitler was a Roman Catholic, as were all of the high up members of Nazi of the Nazi party. They were all Catholics. And Anderson, one of his videos we're going to be watching here in the series of videos that I'm coming out with, Anderson is like, well, he was a Catholic, but he wasn't really a strong Catholic, just kind of baptized Catholic, but he wasn't a practicing Catholic. Absolute total lie. Hitler was con completely controlled by the Vatican. I'm going to show you the proof. But I just want to show you a, a real quick video here. Uh, one of Anderson's post-trib moments, number 49, I believe it is. And um, I, want you to, I want you to listen to this. And if I could just get you to understand that the nation of Israel, so-called, is not under God's blessing and that they are not God's chosen people, I think you'll have no trouble at all realizing that the rapture comes after the tribulation just by a simple reading of Matthew 24 and Mark 13. If I could just get you to understand replacement theology, because that's what he's teaching. If I could just get you to understand that God has replaced Israel with the church, then you'll be able to fall for all these other heresies. You see, every post-tribber must eventually become replacement theology. Why? Obviously, if the body of Christ goes into the time of Jacob's trouble, it can't be about Jacob. It can't be about Israel. It has to be about the church, the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is not over in Israel. So you have to eliminate the clear scriptures that talk about a rebuilt temple where the Antichrist sets himself up to be worshipped and he eventually calls himself God. He causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease. You have to say, oh no, that's not there. You know, the two witnesses come back and they are killed in the, the streets of Jerusalem. Oh, that's not there either. We'll just eliminate that. And all these references to the nation of Israel and geographic Israel. We'll just eliminate it. We'll just eliminate it. We'll just eliminate that. It's all about the church. So anyone who is post-trib must also be replacement theology. Without exception, they all have to be. And if you look up in the Roman Catholic Catechism, they have a section called the Church's Ultimate Trial. I did a pre-trib rapture moment on it. The Church's Ultimate Trial, the Catholic Church has always taught that it is the church, the Christian church, that goes through the Great Tribulation. They don't call it the time of Jacob's trouble because that gives it away. They'll call it the Great Tribulation, even though that term, the Great Tribulation, as a title, as an as a title for that coming seven year time period, it appears not one time, not one time in the King James Bible. Not once. Nowhere does the King James Bible use as a title the Great Tribulation. Not in there. It's not there. The time of Jacob's trouble is in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. It's in there. It is a Bible term. The Great Tribulation is not. So again, the post tribbers will lie to you there. Very interesting. And I want to just address a couple more little points here quick before I continue. Another reason why I'm going to attack Anderson is because he is acting like he is part of my crowd that I'm part of. Okay, I am not the head of the Bible-believing movement, but I am involved in the King James Bible-believing movement. I really could care less what the Methodists are doing or the Presbyterians or the Catholics or any other cult out there. I care about King James Bible believers. And Anderson is coming along and deceiving people into thinking that he believes this King James Bible. And I will demonstrate in my studies that Anderson does not, and he changes it whenever he wants to. You're going to see it. 
Another thing that they're going to say about me is that I'm Jewish or that I am uh, controlled by the Jewish media or something like this. Well, we're going to see about that. First of all, I'm not Jewish. But secondly, we're going to see about this thing of if the Jews control the media, if they are in control of everything, well, then my channel should quadruple in size, maybe go 10 times bigger than what it is currently. It's not going to happen. You know why? Because the Vatican is in control. The Vatican wants this replacement theology taught. I um, want to show you just another thing here which I find very interesting. I, I really was wanting to get these videos done um, because I feel, you know, I had heard initially that this Marching to Zion video of Stephen Anderson, I'm going to show you the screenshot here in a minute, they originally were saying that it comes out in December of 2014. Here's the, the picture of it. The end of one of his uh, Israel Moment videos, he said it's coming out in December of 2014. Now, if you go to framingtheworld.com or marchingtozion.com, uh, I think is what it would be too, it comes down here, it says Marching to Zion coming 2015. Huh. They backed it off. And you go down through here, uh, more info. It says, uh, we are hoping to have this film out by March of 2015. This film is going to be awesome. Oh yeah, for, if you're a Catholic, people will be shocked and blown away by the information in this film. Yeah, sure. Another interesting little tidbit of information down here. Uh, Anderson has, is notorious for getting all of his own little cult buddies together and bringing this thing out. And I looked down here, actually my wife did the research on this, she found this Tim Coleman guy, pastor of 35th Avenue Baptist Church in Phoenix, Arizona. So another uh, Bathlick down there in Phoenix, you know, Illuminati, Illuminati symbol there, the Phoenix. I'm sure there's nothing to that though. But uh, you say, well, who's Tim Coleman? Well, interestingly, if you know where Steven Anderson went to college at, to the university, he went to Hiles Anderson College. If you've seen my studies on that, you know there's a whole lot of problems with that place. Hiles Anderson College. He didn't graduate. He, he was like a, a month away from graduation, and somehow he winds up in Arizona with a, a nice, you know, big house and, a, and, you know, a Babel building and everything. Interesting. But... Um, here on HilesAnderson.edu church directory, you go down to Arizona and look who is there. Timothy Coleman, 35th Avenue, Phoenix, Arizona. Hmm. So this Hiles Anderson College, Stephen Anderson has another one of the graduates uh, as an expert against the Jews. And uh, interesting, the, the website... JesusIsSavior.com. I was checking on that, and I actually saw some anti-Semitic stuff on there too. So David Stewart is also anti-Semitic, you know. And remember, understand. I mean, you have in the Bible Paul saying, "I could wish that myself were accursed for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh." You know, I mean, these guys were doing whatever they could to see Jews saved. Don't, if, please, if you're Jewish out there, if you are Orthodox Jewish or whatever, if you're a Jew and you don't know about the New Testament, please do not think to yourself that the New Testament is against the Jewish people. You know, the very first Christian that was killed was killed by Orthodox Jews back then, Stephen in the book of Acts, and in uh, Acts chapter 7, and he kneels down and he says, Father, forgive them. He, he wanted them to be forgiven. Lay not this sin to their charge. And there was a young Jewish man there, Saul of Tarsus, and he later becomes Paul, the Apostle Paul. And he has this tremendous burden for the Jewish people. Even though he's being persecuted, even though he's being beaten oftentimes by the Jews back then, you know, he still loves them. He still is concerned for their salvation. He is not writing replacement theology. Okay? You read the New Testament and study it with a... with when you're saved and you really understand things, you know, and you will not see replacement theology. You will not see anti-Jewish teachings in the New Testament. Catholicism comes up with it because Catholicism is, is 
You go back far enough, it's ancient mystery Babylon. It's the ancient Babylonian system back in the Old Testament with Nimrod and things, the Tower of Babel and all that. That system has come forward through Nebuchadnezzar and then all these other kingdoms through the Roman kingdom and then Rome merged with paganism and then they just took Christian names and said, oh, we're Roman Catholic now. We're a Christian church. They're not. They're the ancient pagans that go the whole way back to Babylon. That's what they are. And that is the system that still hates Israel and still persecutes Israel. They are the ones that have persecuted the Jewish people since way, 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 way back. Back into the days of Ham and Shem, there were things going on. You know, just absolutely incredible. So this is going to be the introduction to the series of videos Anderson, Stephen Anderson and his lies videos. I'm going to be doing quite a few of these videos. Um, if you are offended by that, then don't watch, quite frankly. But you see, I have a love for the Jewish people. And many of them I realize probably don't love me very much because I'm a, I'm a born-again Christian. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior. Um, and that puts me at odds with a lot of the uh, Jewish people out there. I understand that. And, you know, I can appreciate some of that simply because you've suffered so much at the hands of Roman Catholicism. And unfortunately, Roman Catholicism controls a lot of the uh, Protestant, you know, well, all the Protestant system. They control it. So you've suffered quite a bit at the hands of what people call Christians. But you would do well to study the New Testament on your own and see, compare Christianity uh, that's out there in the world with what the Christians here in the New Testament. You'll see it's not the same system. Uh, real true Christians don't hate Jews. Real true Christians are defenders of Israel. Uh, we know that Israel has a very special place in God's system. And so we don't, we don't speak against the Jews. We don't speak against the nation of Israel. We tell you that, that Jesus died on the cross and paid for your sins. Okay, He is the Messiah. He is the only one that truly could fill that Messiah position that was prophesied back in the Old Testament. Okay, and again, I have other studies on that. I can't get into all that here, but um, just wanted to make this quick introduction video to the series of videos which I will be coming out with here as the Lord gives me time. So, uh, please keep us in your prayers because whenever I make these videos, I get more spiritual attacks uh, I mean, it's just like going right against the Vatican with their little hired stooge, Stephen Anderson. Uh, if, you, if you really want my honest opinion, I believe that there, there seems to be... Um, I've always struggled with this thing. Do these people, are they taking physical orders or are they just taking spiritual orders? Because it's not the Holy Spirit that leads Stephen Anderson. I'm going to demonstrate that in the videos which are coming. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's another spirit. Now, is he actually has, he has another spirit, but is he taking physical orders from Jesuits or whoever to say and do the things that he's doing? Or is it just this Antichrist spirit that is upon Stephen Anderson that is getting him to hate the Jewish people? I don't know. I can't decide that. I can't have, you know, I can't prove definitively one way or the other. But I can show you that he is teaching replacement theology. I mean, he admits it. One of his Israel moments, he says, is this replacement theology? Well, yeah, basically, yeah. He admits it. It's, again, I'm not, I'm not lying about him or slandering him or something like this. He openly, readily admits that he is teaching replacement theology. So we're going to be looking at some things here in these videos. Uh, this will eventually be a playlist. And um, it's absolutely incredible. But my... Um, my exhortation to all of my brothers and sisters out there in Christ, all those of you that believe the King James Bible, I'd like to exhort you to defend the nation of Israel, to defend what our Bible teaches concerning Bible prophecy. Um, it's very important. I'm, a, I'm very afraid for America right now. Um, things are getting very bad very quickly. There are some things that it could get really, really bad for us as Christians here before the rapture and to say, well, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't affect me, I really could care less. Um, you don't want to say that. 
Uh, I want God's grace. I want God's mercy uh, to preserve things as long as possible here. Um, and I would like to be able to have it preserved right up until the time when the Lord catches His bride away. Uh, and the only way we're going to be able to do that and hold this thing off is if we defend the nation of Israel. Because that's who the spotlight turns to after the church is gone. It goes to the Jewish people. And let me just say this yet too, if you haven't, uh, if you'd like a scary thought, God allowed the things to happen in Nazi Germany, number one, because the Christians allowed it to happen. They didn't speak out in defense of the Jewish people. They didn't call out people like Stephen Anderson. That was reason number one. And it's, by the way, it's not just Stephen Anderson. Anybody that's post-trib, they're all going replacement theology. So it's a lot of these guys that are now post-trib. Post-trib replacement theology goes hand in hand. Okay? If you truly understand post-trib, you have to be replacement theology. So look out for that. So first you had the people in Germany kept their mouths shut when the preachers were coming out and attacking the Jews. That was the first problem. But there's another problem. And that is the nation of Israel had become, or basically with the Balfour Declaration, the Jews could go back to their homeland. They didn't want to go back. They were comfortable in Germany. They didn't want to go back to Israel. So the Lord allowed Nazi Germany to happen so that they would want to go back to Israel. And you say, what's that have to do with today, Brian? Well, there's a lot of Jews here in America. And many of them don't want to go back to Israel because they have it really good here in America. If history repeats itself, there's going to come a horrible persecution upon the Jewish people here in America. And then, uh, by the way, if you want to say, well, what's going to happen to the nation of America? Look what happened to Germany after World War II. Russian soldiers came into Berlin and raped every single woman that they could find. The city of Dresden was firebombed. All kinds of bad things. The country of Germany was carved up and given to some given to the UK, some given to Russia, some given to America. What's going to happen to America? And Nazi Germany wasn't half as wicked as, as America is today. You see, I want to say this yet. We are in a rear guard action right now, Christian. So what's a rear guard action? Rear guard action is all the troops that can't fight right now, and there are Christians that are that are you know anybody can fight somewhat as a Christian in terms of spiritual battles, but there are some Christians that don't know what's really going on, and there are some Christians that are just newly saved and whatever else. We got to save and protect them from this onslaught of evil that's coming. I mean, we are totally encircled. The enemy is closing in. You got the Muslim crusade from Catholicism. You got the Sodomite crusade from Catholicism. You have the atheist crusade from Catholicism. And, I, and I'm not being sarcastic. Study this stuff. All the founders of these movements, they all go back to Catholicism. You know? All these different things are coming here to America. And replacement theology now is becoming more and more and more popular as post trib, as more and more people give up on Jesus Christ. They're saying he's not coming back. He's not going to take his bride away. We're going to go through the great tribulation, you know. And so what's happening as a result is these crusades, these things are starting to come after the Christians. And we have a, a choice to make. Either you can join in the fight and try to hold off these evil forces of the Vatican for as long as we can, or you can just turn tail and run. Or join forces with the enemy. I'm not joining forces and I'm not running. I am going to make a lot of videos on this issue. Because it is very, very, very important. If not the most important issue right now that there is facing the body of Christ. We are going into that time where... Catching away is going to happen, 
before real long. I don't know how far off it is, but it's going to happen. And then God turns his views and his attention back to the nation of Israel. You read it about it through the book of Revelation. What legacy are you going to leave behind?